Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tony G. You're watching 1526 Barbecue. I'm very excited. Today I got my meter probe and I'm gonna unbox it and test it with you right now. Check it out. All right, so it comes in this nice box. Let's take a look and see what's inside. Look at that. The meter block. Pretty excited about this, guys. Now, a buddy of mine at work has it and he says it's great. There we go. All right, it's pretty neatly packed. Looks like we got some instructions. Yep. All right, we'll take a look at those a little later. Uh, a support card if you need help setting it up. And look at that. Look at that, oh boy. I went ahead and got the four probe block for myself. Uh, they also sell a single probe. Um, I did notice that they have like a single probe normal and a single pro or a single probe pro or plus maybe it's called. Definitely wanna get the nicer one. It's got longer range on the Wi-Fi. Cool little kickstand. I'm noticing here a charging port I'm assuming. Let's see what that looks like standing up. Very cool. All right. Um, yeah, look at this. Okay. So that's where the batteries go. Looks like we can pull that tab and we should have power. Oh, this is pretty cool. So this uh, back panel is actually secured with magnets, making it fit nice and tight in there and secure. That's cool. Oh, there it is. It's on. Let's go ahead and peel that protective cover off. All right, let's take a look at the instructions. All right, so right away on the instructions, it tells you the, the maximum temperature. So the internal probe, or the part that goes into the meat, can't get any higher than 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just fine. I think the hottest thing I'll cook will probably be a pork shoulder at... I don't know, 205 or something. And the ambient temperature, or the temperature probe on the outside, which I'll give you a look at it here in a second, its maximum is 527 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me show you what I mean by that. So what's cool about this probe is there's actually two temperature probes on each probe. This side that goes into the meat gives you your internal. And then there's also a temperature reading from the external here, which tells you what your pit temperature is. All right, the instructions are telling me that you need to charge the probes for at least eight hours before each use. And once they're charged, they should last about 24 hours. And the way you charge it is actually by turning this off. All right, so they're charging now. I don't know if they come uh, pre-charged, but well, I guess we'll find out today. All right, let's go over some of the uh, buttons here. So if I turn it back on, it also says once you turn it on, all four probes are on. Um, so that's the power switch. Here's some controls. Well, here, let me first set it to Fahrenheit. All right, so there's a reminder right there. It says turn me off to charge probes before using. So I guess they don't come pre-charged. So if you're going to get yourself a set, just keep that in mind. You're not going to be able to use it right away, which is kind of a bummer because I was planning on uh, cooking a pork shoulder and possibly a chuck roast, and I wanted to test these out today. But we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to that, and it's shut down. So I guess it's telling me that it needs to charge. So it's off now. It's charging. Let's read through some more of these instructions. Okay, while that's charging, I can go ahead and try to get the app on the phone. I have an Android. All right, you're gonna just wanna go to your Play Store. If you have Apple, you're gonna wanna go to, you know, wherever you get apps for, uh, for Apple products. And then I'm gonna just search the meter. There you go, smart meat thermometer. And we'll install that. 
So while the app is downloading, I'm reading some more of the instructions. Because I have the block, this, this block version of the meter, you can use it in two different ways. You can use just the touchpad here and not interface with your app, or you can connect through Wi-Fi and interface with the app on the phone. All right, so now I got the app installed. It says, thank you for choosing meter. And it asks you to select. So yeah, here's what I was talking about earlier. There's a regular one probe meter, and then there's a meter plus. The plus gets you a little further range. And then there's the meter block, which is what I have. So I'll select that. All right, um, I don't know what to do on this page. There we go. It's, so here it is just kind of teaching us a little bit about what we bought. Display with the touch screens, uh, pr the probe charging slots, which are right there. It also has a USB port on the side that you can charge with if you don't want to use the four AA batteries that it needs. Again, we talked about the internal temperature and the ambient temperature. There is a notch on every probe and that part of the probe needs to be fully inserted into the meat, otherwise you might damage it. All right, in order for this to work, you need to enable your Bluetooth, turn on your Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi is on, I just enabled Bluetooth. I have to give the app permission to so, know my location. I also definitely want to prioritize important alerts. That way, if uh, we have any temperature issues, that will come through on my phone. Um, here we go. It's the meter. I want it to be able to allow access to Do Not Disturb for the meter app. So basically, if my phone's on Do Not Disturb and I'm not getting a text message or anything, I'll still get notification about temperatures. Definitely want that. And we'll go back. Okay, so that's enabled. And now it's just to charge your meter probes. All right, so it's been charging for a little while. It has not been eight hours, but let's see if we have enough charge to kind of sync everything up. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my meter app. Uh, I guess we'll go through these steps again. Yep. Yep. We already learned about the probe. All right, so I'm going to say the probes are charged. Uh, so it's asking, is it charged for at least four hours? I'm going to say yes. And then we'll go next. Turn on the meter block. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, I turned it on. Go to the next instruction. Um, okay, we're going to use Wi-Fi, so we're going to hit OK there. And it says I need to add the block, so let's go next. Connect your meter block, searching for meter block. Okay, cool, let's see if this works. So my phone is currently searching for the block. And looks like it found it. All right, so we gotta get it on Wi-Fi. All right, I'm gonna skip this step, but you'll find your Wi-Fi and use your Wi-Fi password. All right, once you have your Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi password in, you hit connect right up here. And it's attempting to connect to our Wi-Fi, which is name it something I can remember. All right, it says I can now track cooks with my meter block probes over the Wi-Fi using my meter link. Fantastic. So I'll click done. All right. 
right, so it looks like it's doing some sort of test. All right, so it's saying my meters, the, the probes themselves can connect to the block at about, let's say, 10 to 20 feet away, which is fine. It'll be right on the smoker. And then from the block, I can connect to my phone up to about 105 feet away. All right, next. All right, looks like you got to get an account. All right, so I enter my email address and hit submit. All right, you got to go through and kind of register it with your name. I'll, I'll pass that boring stuff for you guys. All right, once you finish the registration, you hit register at the top right. And I'm all set. It says you are all set to use the meter cloud. I don't want to learn anything about that right now. All right, and then it says here, get cooking. All right, so here we go. Well, that's what I'm excited about is seeing that actual temperature trend. Okay, we're going to hit done there. All right, so here's like the dashboard. So probe one seems to be working. Probe two is not. Maybe that one's still charging. Probe three. And, uh, sorry, probe three is working, but probe four is not. All right, so we're going to take probe one and probe three and put them into some meat that I'm going to smoke. I'm not going to show this step on camera, but this is that line that we were talking about a moment ago. You have to insert the probe into the meat at least up to that line. To be safe, I'm going to go a little deeper. Otherwise, the internal probe, which has a max temperature of about 212 degrees, will get ruined by your external temperature, which is going to be, you know, smoking temp, 225 to 275 or something like that. So I'm going to go put these in and then we'll check them out uh, on the app in a little bit. All right, guys. So lesson number one, if you get a meter, expect that you will need to charge it for some time. Um, as soon as I plug the probes in, maybe, maybe five minutes later, they died. So it's about four hours later now. I went ahead and put a probe number one into my pork butt or my pork shoulder. And you can see I'm reading an internal temp of 142 with an ambient of 177, which is interesting because I have my pit set to 225. I was just out there uh, when I put the probe in and it was saying it was 220. So hopefully that comes up a little bit. But let's see what happens and, and what kind of adjustments we can make. Let me see if I can adjust the target. It says tap here to set up cook one. I am cooking pork. Um, and here is pork shoulder. And I'm going to make pulled pork. So I know I want to go probably 200 ish. So I'll see if I can get an alarm at around 195. And then I can start the clock. Telling you how to set it up and put your block out by the grill, which I did already. All right, so it says the estimated cook time for this target temperature might not might be inaccurate. Tap here to find out more. I got an internal of 142. I put a target of 195, and outside or sorry, the pit temp is 190. Estimating cook time is one. I'm not sure what that means. Let's tap here. All right, so basically what it's saying is if you try to hit a target temp above 195, it's not very accurate. That's okay. We'll uh, leave it there and see how it goes. That's uh, probe two, so I gotta stay here on probe one. All right, and what happens if I hit and turn? I know there's a graph somewhere. Uh, 
How do I get to it? View cook graph. So this is going to be, it's probably going to look just like a dot. Again, I just put it in maybe two minutes ago. And maybe that's why it might not trend. But once I get a, uh, a chart, oh, there it is. So that yellowish orange line is the ambient temp. That blue line down below is my shoulder temp. So I have a long way to hit my target of 195. Pretty cool.